Hey everybody, welcome back. It's been a couple weeks since I last posted a video, and the sole reason for that is because I moved from California to Florida, and it took a little bit longer than expected with some of the logistics, and then I had some personal stuff come up. So, so for this week's video, I'm going to do, I don't know how many I'm going to do in the series, uh, as many as it takes basically, but I want to go over the Analog Way Live Core setup. Now, I know a year ago, Analog Way released a new level, so this might be a little bit phased out, but this is just more for people. Maybe you're using an Ascender, or you maybe you just got a new one because you got it used and they're getting phased out. Maybe there's one installed where you work. Just general information type thing. So, I am using the simulator because I don't have... And a cinder lying around. So we're going to go ahead and get this started. All right, here we are. So we are just going to be doing a single Ascender 48. And I'm just going to be taking you through your initial setup. So we're going to start with our pre-config. We can set to an internal rate and then set what that rate will be. Um, 5, 9, or 6 normally works best. But you can also do it off external rate and then set what input you want to get that rate from so I always keep it internal keep it at 60 you'll be fine since this is a single ascender we don't need to worry about any links so we're gonna run past that I'm gonna be using all of my outputs so I don't want to rearrange any resources because then I don't have anything to use on those outputs So what we're going to do is I'm going to do a two projector blend for my first screen. I'm going to label it blend. I'm going to shrink that up because I don't need it. And then I'm going to do DSMs and I'm going to do record. And yes, it's only one DSM. You can make two of these DSMs, whatever you like. When I did my training uh, on these, I was told to always turn these on, and I do it anyways. This is more for if you needed to make a specific input your native background, this will already be enabled. I don't know if I've ever actually done it, but it's nice to set up. These you do have to every time, because otherwise you cannot set a frame as a native background. And last but not least, as far as the, the frames go, you s there are sets. And you just tell it where it needs to look to make those sets. So typically, if I do a two-projector blend or a three-projector blend, I set it up as frame one, two, or one, two, three, depending on what the scenario is. And then, now DSMs, I normally don't have one, so I'm going to leave that blank as color. But my record, I will throw another image in that as well. And last but not least, on the pre-config, we have our dynamic, sorry, our miscellaneous, where we can do dynamic fits, um, basic or default, pip colors, and downstream key colors. I honestly don't mess with this that much, but that's what's on the tab. So outputs, if you want to change this to be 1080i or anything else, you can have all your computer resolutions as well. And since screen one and or output one and two make up screen one, you can apply that to all the screens. You can also do your internal rate or a standardized rate as well. One other thing is your HDCP. Some things you have to turn off not only the HDCP on the input, but as well as the output before it will, before it will work properly. So I just go ahead and pop those off as well. Off, off, off. And honestly, for our record and our DSMs, I'm going to leave those as P. Is Actually, I'm going to take that back. I'm going to change this to I for the record because I want to. Inputs, same thing. 
it's best, or I find it easiest if I just go and click on that one and then I can go through and label everything. So with these, you can label the input, but notice how I have the SDI selected. If I type in a label here, but I'm actually plugging up the DVI, the label isn't gonna isn't going to cross over. It's you're literally labeling it for every port or plug that's on the back for input one. So typically, and I'm gonna just emulate a show that I've done in the past. Let's get over. Trying to figure out how to make this work. Okay, so I'm just gonna emulate a show I've done in the past. So I, I normally do PC1, HDMI, PC2. Now I know some people love labeling things as graphics one or graphics two but this is what I've done for many years. And it comes down to who do you work for and what do they want you to do? So if you have a specific, so if you have a executive producer or technical director that wants you to label things a certain ways, just so you can communicate easier, as long as the switcher the person running the graphics and the person calling the show all use the same terms. Everything seems to normally flow best. So I got my, I got all of those. Um, and actually four, I'm going to go back. I'm going to make this my iMac because on this particular show, I have someone switching multiple cameras and they just send me one signal. So we'll throw in a couple more of these. we look back at the top of this, we can actually adjust a couple of things. I'm going to go like, you can send a test pattern. Uh, you're essentially sending it to your multi-view. I'll turn that off too. Um, you're essentially sending it to your multi-view to make sure you're laying your multi-view out right. Let's say you're setting this up and your graphics operator hasn't finished setting up or hasn't dropped you your lines yet. That way you know you're doing everything right. Um, image, you can... I've had to do some brightness adjustment, very little. I don't really go past plus or minus 10 because uh, then it just looks kind of wonky. Um, but that's me. Aspect, you can predefine your crops and your aspects. Whenever I do, say, names and we chroma key everything out, I always still have a dark line on the top, so I'll just drop this down just a couple of pixels to get rid of that. Maybe you don't experience it, but if you want to crop it at the input level, not at the layer level, we're just talking about cropping on the input level. This is where you do that. Um, format, not so much. And keen, again, if, if you're going to chroma key something out for names, keen, turn on a color killer, select your color. You might have to adjust these and your tolerances a little bit, but it'll knock it right out. Um, and like I was saying with, with HDCP, let's go and turn that off on everybody. If you're using a SDI plug, you don't have the option to turn off your HDCP because there's no handshake that's happening. There we go. So next is your library and this is your media pool, your library, whatever you want to call it. If you're going to upload some for your blend area, Analog Way makes another program called, a, I believe it's a frame cutter, that helps you take one big image and make it into multiple images so it'll fit in your blend area. Also, when you upload, you have a choice of making it a frame or a logo. I typically make everything a frame unless it is literally a logo, like a brand logo with an alpha channel and all of that. Um, the biggest difference would be a logo is smaller and takes up less space and a frame is larger, has a larger resolution and the file size is allowed to be a little bit bigger. So we're going to do three of these real quick, just three random ones. And because it makes showing the next part a little bit easier. So... 
this is your logo library. So you have four frames and four logos. So I up uploaded three frames and then I'm going to select. So this is frame one and this goes back to our pre-config with our logos, oops, sorry, with our native background. And we told for output one to pull from frame one and for output two to pull from frame two. So frame one, we're assigning frame two and it will, when we get to the blending part, it'll actually blend those and then frame three. And this will be our native background for the for our records. Monitoring, this is literally your multi-view. Set it up however you want to. All the same adjustments you can do or need to do for um, any of your other outputs or inputs. Blending, we're not gonna go heavy into what you need to do to do a project to projector blend. We'll just say, this is where you tell the analog way that you're doing a two projector blend, how big your blend area is gonna be. This is where you do your feathering for all of output one, for the cross area, and for output two. Um, something I always forget to do is turn blending on. Um, normally after about 20 minutes, I remember to do that, and that helps to make, look, make, it, make it look not so funky. So services, you can do your update if you just download an update file. This is a very important tab, and I cannot stress that enough. If you don't know what this is, if you get to a show, you set up a show, you spend hours upon hours making everything look right, and then your boss comes to you and goes, great show, everything looks awesome, we're doing it again in three months. You really want to come here, you want to create a backup file, you want to save it, that way when you walk in in three months, you can upload it. And exactly how the show is today when you're leaving is what you're going to get when you walk through the door. It saves you so much time. I've done this on shows I do once a year. And three years later, I may change the looks. I may change the layouts, some of that stuff. But at least I still have corporate branded or cor corporate approved colors for my borders and backgrounds. My media library is all corporate branding. I don't have to change it unless... They change their logo or they have a special logo for that event. And then I just add it, resave, save it, label it, label each year accordingly. So control, you can, if you wanted to do a factory reset, you can reset the entire thing. You actually reset it and it'll save a couple of things or just out of the box reset it. Or if you just need to reset one thing like imp all of the input settings all of the memories all of the monitor memories just you just want to wipe your logos things like that you can just delete individual things auto calibrate i've never used this button but i now that i've see that it's here because i didn't really know it was here i do want to get on a show and just plug everything up and just hit go and see what it does see if it actually reads all my active inputs or not then again, I have to wait for my graphics guy to run, drop all of his lines to me, and then I can do it. So we have something to play around with. So I'm going to stop it there because I'm trying to keep this to a certain uh, timestamp. Uh, next week, we're going to go over how to build different looks, how to save them as memories, how to save master memories, and how to navigate and keep everything organized. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.